Hello everybody and welcome to another video in my series making great horns out of junk. If you've been following this series we've been trying to make a pretty good French horn out of parts of an old king double that had a pretty good bell and a pretty good sound and the valve section from a very low priced Con 8D copy from China from a company called JL. I don't know. The horn is sold under many different brand names and it's very inexpensive. We've decided after trying out several bells that the King sounded best in combination with this particular valve section. And in my last video, I spent a lot of time, well, way too much time trying to get dents out of the bell so that it looked perfect. This is a skill that I don't have in great abundance. And after a while, I just kind of gave up. But I know that whatever dents remain in the bell will not prevent the horn from sounding pretty good. Now, a bell is a very difficult item to bend. And I don't want to get into bending a bell because it takes a great deal of pitch and annealing and a lot of arm strength to get it to fit just right. And this particular valve section seems to fit pretty well as it is. I'll have to watch out for that thumb valve because it's very close to the bell, but this is a pretty good fit. I'm looking for places where I'm going to have to either put a little brace in between the bell and the tubes or where I can solder the tubes directly to the bell, which is ideal. Now I'm going to try to put the horn together very close to what it's going to be eventually so that I can wire it up and then solder it. So in order to do that, I'm going to use this little piece of styrofoam and I'm going to try to get the horn set up so that it's just perfect without being soldered together. Then after that, I'll wire it up and solder it up. I can't solder on this piece of styrofoam, but I can get it set up and wired up. It doesn't quite work like this, so I'm going to have to put a few little blocks of foam under various tubes to get the thing situated just perfectly. The thing is, it's very hard to get it set up just perfectly. Whenever I get one thing in line, another thing goes out of line. Well, looky here. Here's something I can use, a French horn mute. Since it's a cone, it can give me exactly the amount of elevation that I need on this F slide. Never has that mute been used so well. I'm going to have to put standoff brace here. A standoff brace is a very small little brace when two tubes are close together. And I think I'm going to have to put two on this side as well. However, after having collected up about 60 French horns and taking many of them apart, I have a lot of braces hanging around. And it's just a question of finding the right size and number. I'm going to start with just two standoff braces to begin with once I have them soldered in place. Well, I think I actually want to try the horn out to see if it sounds any good before I uh, go to all the trouble to put all the braces in. So I begin by wiring that brace in place and wiring is another skill that repairmen have that well i struggle with this is just normal steel wire and when you wrap it around two brass tubes it's easy to get it nice and snug and tight but whenever you heat up those tubes to put solder into it the steel wire expands at a very high rate and becomes loose. That 
can lead the brace to drop out or the wire to shift or any number of things to happen. I'm only showing you a few seconds of what, for me, was an epic struggle to try to get this horn wired up. Eventually, uh, turned out to be a useless struggle. Here's another one of my attempts to stabilize the horn by soldering in an old pinky hook between those two tubes to get them in the right position. This uh, did not work out. Well, so I gave up on that. I'm going to have to have a standoff brace on this side. I guess I've already got it in place there. And now I have to just wire it. So I have the thing roughly wired together and I'm just doing some final checks. But once again, whenever I adjust one thing, something else goes out of line. When I wired it together, I neglected to leave enough space for the third valve slides to come out. So the valve section is going to have to be elevated at the bottom. And whenever I do that, the tube comes out of the ferrule where the bell section joins the valve section. And so it goes on and on. Okay, so I'll try a different way. I'm going to put the horn into my horn holder on my desk. And I'm going to suspend the valve section from the bell by using, you guessed it, duct tape. It's important that this thumb valve doesn't hit up against the bell. And so here's a little hacker trick. I stuffed two oversized washers in there to keep the thumb valve out of contact with the bell. And now I've hung the valve section from the bell with duct tape and with the use of some wiring, it all seems to work out. Now it's time to solder the instrument together and I'll start with this ferrule where the bell meets the valve section. I am not a pro at this. Now the last brace I put in is this brace that goes on the bottom of the horn between the throat of the bell and the hoop of the horn. I made a really cool video about my many difficulties and problems I had in getting this brace to fit correctly. It required a lot of bending and a lot of soldering. However, I lost all that video when these two fellows who live upstairs in my house came down and they said, what about dinner? So I didn't get a chance to show you that video. However, next week, we're going to take the lead pipe, anneal it, and bend it and fit it onto the French horn. We'll get a chance to play it. In the meantime, take a look at some of my other videos on my channel the Horn Guild. I've got two other series on there. 
one about classical covers, and another one, new music for French horns that features my original songs. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe. Thanks.